What's up, amigos? Commander Jaime here today. Today, I'm going to show you how to play Genesis. And so we're going to go over specifically Regalia, Fenrir, and Himiko. And I'll mention some details on the plays, the card choices, and some common cards, and also cover premium and V premium specific. So let's get right into it. Genesis is a clan that uses the soul as the main mechanic. And so really what the soul is for is two reasons. One, to pay costs of skills. And secondly, using divine gauges as cards to set underneath your units. With that being in mind, I also want to cover common cards such as the Regalia engine that is commonly used through multiple variants of Genesis. So as you can see on the screen, we have Idriso and Nor, and these are Regalia units. And so they work in tandem. The first is Idriso. The main skill that you want is Counterblast 1, search your deck up to one copy of Norn and call it to Regard Circle, shuffle your deck, and then you can choose up to two of your regards, put one card from your soul as a divine gauge for each of them. This can actually fetch the Norn and set it up behind your Vanguard or your Regard column, depending on what you're trying to use for Norn to boost. And how does that happen is that Idriso also has a skill where all of your Regards with Divine Gauge get the ability boost. Now, why would a Grade 2 Norn boosting help in your winning image? It's really the second skill. At the end of the battle that it boosted a unit with Regalia and its card name, you can discard a card from your hand and one of these units Divine Gauge and stand the boosted unit. And that unit gets plus 10k and drive minus one until the end of turn. So depending if your Vanguard or your Regard is Regalia, you can stand that unit. And so essentially you can also perform restanding Vanguards, but also restand Regalia units as Regards that have gained power from triggers as well. So you have some flexibility. Other common cards that I want to highlight for the premium format specifically are the Strides. And so one of them is Marduk. When your Vanguard attacks and your Vanguard's grade three, you can Counter Blast one, Soul Blast six, and stride this card onto Vanguard from your G zone. And it gets the power and criticals of one of your heart cards that had gotten from trigger effects until the end of the turn. So essentially you're able to superior stride during your battle phase and any triggers that your Vanguard may have gotten, uh, Marduk has them now. You can also use Marduk as a way that if you're not able to stride later on, you can also use this cost to be able to, to perform stride in a different way. The second stride is Minerva. She has two skills. So blast three cards with Regalia in the card name and flip a copy of this card from your G zone and this gets plus 10K and an extra drive. The second is GV3. So blast six cards with Regalia in their names and choose a card from your hand and discard it. You pay this cost when you attack with this unit. And if you do, at the end of the battle, stand all of your units with Regalia in their card names and they get drive minus three until the end of turn. So essentially you have a restanding Vanguard. This is important because it has Regalia in the name and it also has some synergy with Norn that I'll cover in shortly. Furthermore, all decks can use this Minerva stride because it doesn't require the heart to be Regalia. It just uses the cost of skills that are required for Regalia. So keep that in mind. The last stride I want to cover is Counter Blast 1, turn a card face up in your G zone. Until the end of the turn, one of your rear guards gets plus 10k and a crit. If your soul has four or less cards, draw two cards and soul charge five as well. The second skill is at the end of the battle of this unit attacks, soul blast 15 cards, stand one of your rear guards, and until the end of the turn, your opponent cannot call sentinels from hand. This will come up shortly later on and I'll cover more in deeply. In V premium format, Regalia is played commonly in this way, but there is some flexibility with the variant. One, they use Freg as a grade 3 main, and she has phenomenal skills. The first skill is that it continues Vanguard skill. All of your rearguards with Divine Gauge cannot leave the rearguard circle by your opponent's card effects, and they get plus 5k. This essentially protects your rearguards from effects, but and also give them power to have more of an aggression. Second, Axe skill. Once per turn, you can counter blast one, check the top five cards of your deck, choose one card from among them, and call it to rearguard circle. Shuffle your deck, and then if you call the unit with Regalia on its card name, Choose up to two of your regards and put a card from the soul face down as a divine gauge for each of them. This skill is essentially help to set up your board, but also search for certain key pieces such as Idrisol, Norn, and Artemis. The third skill, at the beginning of your turn, if your opponent has four or more or less cards in their damage zone, you can discard five divine gauge and choose one of your opponent's vanguards and deal one damage. This can help put your opponent at five so you can have an aggression to push and deal the six damage with attack. Typically, we use the force one marker in this case just to make bigger numbers, and we put them on the Vanguard just to have our Vanguard be aggressive because thanks to Norn's ability and also Idrisil's boosting ability, we're able to have the Vanguard be boosted and restood so you can have a Vanguard attack twice per turn. You can also use other cards thanks to Idrisil with the Divine Gauge to be able to be as boosters such as Artemis. Artemis is a card that it gets 10k for every Divine Gauge that it has. So essentially you could have it as a booster safely from attacks and whatever unit that you may have, such as a card like Norn. And then you could finish your field with whatever Regalia units that you may have and start doing aggression. Into the premium aspect of Regalia, again, you can use Freg or you can use a card like Angelica as your main Vanguard. In this example, I'll be using Freg again. You can have your field set up with Idriso and a Norn as simple as that. And then you can have it where your Vanguard attacks. It's restood by Norn and then you attack once more. But this time you counter blast one and soul blast six for Marduk. Marduk will be able to 
superior strike from the G zone, gain any triggers that you may have stacked on the Vanguard still as well, and now have access to triple drive. That triple drive can now be put into potentially Idrisol getting more triggers, so that way when your Idrisol can attack, it may be more stronger with triggers. Furthermore, with the synergy with Marduk and the timing as well, you want to make sure that you boost your Vanguard and not do Marduk just yet. When Marduk actually superior strides, the boosted unit that Norn has is technically the grade 3 heart that you have. And since at the end of the battle that changed, Marduk won't be the one that's actually roosted. So your effect kind of fizzles. So it's important for you to boost the grade 3, restand it, and then attack the second time. And that's where your superior strike Marduk. So that way you can still take advantage of the extra stride tracks because you're a new unit with triple drive. Going into the Minerva stride turn, you can do a simple settle with Idris So and Norn as well, just like I mentioned. And thanks to cards like Mikurahime, you can Soul Blast reduce Minerva's effect to zero regalia. So if you have None in the soul, it doesn't matter because soul blast zero is, is soul blast zero. This gives it an extra drive check so that way when Norm boosts it, you can have quad check, put the triggers onto the Vanguard or onto the Idris soul column that you have. You restand Minerva, it only loses one drive check, which means that it still has triple drive on the second Vanguard attack. And again, you can stack the triggers onto the regards that you have and then attack accordingly. Key cards that I want to mention specifically Regalia are Thrud and Var. These cards are often used for using divine gauges and also soul charging and also generating advantage and counter charging too. You definitely wanna have these cards in your arsenal so that way you're able to perform your winning image. Moving on to Himiko. Himiko is really unique where it has one simple skill as a Vanguard. You can Soul Blast 5 and then put a crit trigger or a draw trigger to the bottom of the deck and then apply that trigger's effects the same number of times as your opponent's Vanguard's great. So for example, if you're going first as a grade three and your opponent is a grade two, you can apply the trigger twice. And so typically we wanna do critical triggers and we wanna utilize the Force 2 marker and stack it on an Idrisol rearguard Column. So that way it can restand with all the power gain. Idrisso boosted by Norn typically in this case will be 43k with crit 4. So if your opponent's at 2 damage or if not more, it's instant lethal. And then you can restand and try it again if they guarded it. If you're going second or it comes down to the later in the game, your opponent will be a grade 3. Then you could add to the mix of cards such as Repler. Repler, after you're attacking with your Idrisso and your Vanguard, you can use Repler to attack. Kind of blast swan and also gain all the power and criticals from any of your units onto it so since you stack them onto injure cell you can now copy those criticals and powers onto it and now you have a third attack that's just as lethal as well going into the premium side of things we have marduk as well once you have already applied himiko's trigger effects onto the idris column if you have the extra soul and counter blast you could essentially just attack pay the cost go into marduk and have the advantage of two things one having the extra drive track that you can still stack a trigger onto the idris column or if you already stack triggers on your vanguard it also gains those triggers already before your drive tracks technically so you can take advantage depending on your opponent's damage and also propagate the crit and power to your front row making every attack lethal going into fenrir Fenrir is a very unique deck where it's more focused on consistency and also utilizing your deck as a toolbox in a way. You can use Force 1 or Force 2 if you want to. In this case, I'll be using Force 1. Typically, you can use its effect to Soul Blast any number of cards and then the summation of the grades of that cards, you can search for that specific card in your deck with that grade. So I Soul Blast out of 3, so I get to search for another 3, which is a copy of Idrisol. And the Idrisol can fetch Norn, set it up as a regard column onto the Force 1 marker. And then you could also pair it up with a card such as Vanagander. Vanagander on place, you can Soul Blast 1 and retire one of your opponent's regard. Then your attack patterns can be as simple as Vanagander attacking first. At the end of the battle that it detect the Vanguard, you can put Vanagander into the soul. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one into the top, one at the bottom, and put the rest in your soul. So you can stack your deck. Then your Vanguard can attack. Use the skill of Fenrir to Soul Blast 1 to give it 10k. But also it has another skill where you can Counter Blast 1 whenever a card is Soul blasted from your soul and you can call that card back to rearguard circle so you can recall the vanagander as well beefing up your vanguard and then doing your drive checks stack them onto the idris column where you can have maximum pressure there and then idris will restand thanks to norn and then lastly you can attack with vanagander once more and you could also use the retire skill if you want to to get rid of another rearguard but essentially you attack again with vanagander goes into soul you get to again play something at the top of your deck bottom deck and soul charge something this will allow you to stack your deck defensively as well potentially and you can get a trigger potentially a heal trigger or other triggers to make it easier for you to survive that next turn as well also as you get enough damage during the defensives 
you can play cards such as Veritron to have defensive plays. Veritron is on place on Guardian Circle. You can counter blast one Soul Blast Tree, choose one of your opponent's circles, and essentially put the top card of their deck onto that circle. It kind of retires in a way, so it disrupts their plays, making it easier for you to guard. But you can also Soul Blast Vanagander once more and use Fenrir skill to revive it during your opponent's battle phase. And then once Vanagander is placed onto Rear Guard Circle, you can Soul Blast one and retire another Rear Guard, so you have maximum disruption at that point too. You could also put Vanagander in the back row just to to keep it safe from attacks and then next turn just reuse it and it can go back into soul switch it onto premium i want to talk about a card such as amaroda because it's often overlooked so one of the neat things that you can do is take advantage of the idrisol column of course counter blast one give your idrisol plus 10k and a crit thanks to amaroda's first skill then of course if you have four or less you can draw two cards and soul charge five but the second skill is where you can essentially first attack with the idrisol to have that crit pressure and then attack with your vanguard and then at the end of the battle, after you apply triggers onto your rear guard, you can Soul Blast 15 to restand Idrisol again. And then for the rest of this turn, your opponent cannot call Sentinels from their hand. So if you have more rear guard attacks, such as a restanding column, it's a lot harder for your opponent to guard that. And you can restand Idrisol for another attack as well. And then if you have another card on the other rear guard, that's another attack that you can account for as well. You could also do double Idrisol Noran column as well to get more attacks that way. It may not be as strong, but it's more attacks with that guard restriction. There are other deck variants such as the Astro Poets that I would recommend a YouTuber called Astro Susanoa if you want to learn more about that deck in the V Premium and Premium format. He has awesome deck profiles on it, so I encourage you to check out his channel for that. Some other common key cards. We have cards that help with soul charging and also soul blast cost. So we have Mikarahime, as I mentioned before. She is what I call a soul blast re reducer. So essentially for whatever cost that you pay for soul blast, it's reduced by three. This can be extremely useful for the Minerva stride or even during your battle phase such as Merdu and then of course cards like Himiko that require a lot amount of soul so it reduces the load in that sense. You also have cards like Crew where you can massively soul charge all at once depending on the number of units that you have on the field so if you have six you get to soul charge six. In premium we have G guards and the most common are Iris and Ear. Iris is a generic where on place you can choose three cards from your drop and put them into your soul. This lets you soul charge selectively for whatever drop zone cards that you may have. Ear is a little more selective where it has to soul charge from the drop different grades so if you you have zero one two three you can soul charge up to four cards and sometimes that's feasible and sometimes it's not so you can use the cards interchangeably on what makes sense you have other cards such as like glaipnir dual long from Keter Sanctuary. Gleipnir is on place, Vanguard or Rigard Circle. You can counter blast one, soul charge one card, and grab a card from your soul and add it to your hand. Also on attack, you can soul blast one and give this unit plus 10k. So this card lets you soul charge a little bit, but also get a card back from your soul to be able to use for next turn as well, while serving as a beater that you can use easily without a booster, or just make it even harder for them to guard with a booster. Duolong is a newer card in Keter that we're using in Genesis, and essentially on play, if you have a clan card, which in this case we do as Genesis, you can discard a card, soul blast one, and add a card from your drop to your hand. This lets you essentially grab pieces to be able to reuse, such as Idrisos that may have gone to the drop zone by either being retired or maybe attacked or even milled or soul charged and then soul blasted. There's some flexibility in getting your pieces, making the deck consistent. You could also get defensive cards such as PGs, Raider Heals for G Guardian, etc. Keep note that you cannot get Keter Sanctuary cards such as the Over Trigger if you do play it. So you are restricted to Genesis specific cards. And also for players that have been around for years, rest in peace Tyro. It was one of the reasons why Gleipnir is, was a card that was really good back then as well. But it's still, maybe just maybe, we can at least get one Tyro back. Two of the common cards that I want to highlight is Dreaming Dragon and the G Guard Lore. Dreaming Dragon is a stand trigger that essentially at the end of the turn GB1, this can go back to deck and then put your entire drop zone into the deck and shuffle it and then if you have 10 or more cards that were shuffled back you can draw one card this essentially helps you not deck out as you play genesis you're going to soul charge a lot of cards and maybe going through your deck a lot so there is a potential of deck out and dreaming dragon helps with that laura is a g guard where you can essentially return three normal units from your drop or soul in combination or separately to give you an extra turn because essentially it's a triple drive that saves you but is in the form of a g guard so definitely play at least one three tips or general guidelines that i want to let you know first focus on setting up your soul properly whether it be the amount of soul or the quality that you need as early as possible this is both v premium and premium formats so it's essential to have the proper soul for your deck be able to execute as winning image and be able to win one of the weaknesses of genesis is that if you don't have the proper soul that you need you automatically lose because you can't really do much because a lot of your key cards depend on the soul or even divine gauges so keep that in mind second marduk helps in cases where you cannot stride or if you get to the grade three turn first so what's really cool about genesis is because they have a card like marduk where you can go first and still have the first stride in a sense and then later on you'll be closer to gb higher 
counts in that sense. But it also makes your turn not so lackluster where it may be even safe to go into the grade three turn. This is matchup dependent, so assess the situation. And even in later turns where maybe you're barely surviving from an attack, you may not have the proper cards to pay the cost of stride. So you could always do your main grade three Vanguard's effect and then go into a second Marduk to help you have a better turn in case you couldn't stride three deck out. Watch out and get some practice with your stopping point. It's the same thing with Grand Blue, but like I mentioned, cards like Dreaming Dragon and Lore help you without decking out, but you could also moderate your soul charging and also your drawing power. So find that stopping point for you. So that way you don't lose to yourself. If you want to go more into details with deck profiles, I link them in the description from me and also numerous players from the community that I highly recommend. There's a lot of variants and a lot of different tech choices that you can use in both formats and also within the variants themselves. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of card choices and also metagame dependent. Be patient with yourself because Genesis is a clan that does take a little effort to get used to it and also really know how to deck build behind. So really put in the effort. And if you do need some help, you could always book a Metafy session with me and go into my Metafy page and go to the Genesis Enlightenment session. And we can have more of a one-on-one -on -one where I can help you speed up the process, help you better understand the clan as a whole. So that way you see your own success and also enjoying playing the decks to the best of your ability as well. Also, if you plan to buy cards use the affiliate links such as tcg player trading card mint and 50 card shop to get discounts as well and also support the channel if this video gave you some value please leave a like it really helps out so that way other fellow card fighters like yourself can see the video as well and get some insight from it too also i will make a pin thread and please add your comment and suggestions and tips for other genesis players so that way we can share the knowledge too whether you be a veteran or you're just learning the clan now it's always worth sharing so that way everybody can benefit i also like to engage with the community and also give my feedback as well you could also share the video that is is interested in the clan or somebody that wants to learn how to face Genesis, especially with the upcoming tournaments that we have every year. And lastly, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell for instant notifications for future content. On to the next one, amigos. Bye!